It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. What's Friday? And it's time for a Friday's Fireside Chat. I want to ask every dealer owner out there that's transitioning from print to IT services a question. When was the last time you took the CIO of your regional hospital out to lunch? Not to sell them anything. Just take them out to lunch to introduce yourself to them. Take them out to lunch to learn from an IT executive in your marketplace. When was the last time you did it? When was the last time you asked the CIO or the CTO of a regional bank to play golf with you? so you could pick his brain or her brain. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm convinced the missing link for dealerships becoming successful in IT services is human capital. They've been told for so long, you can partner, you can build, or you can buy. Well, I think a lot of the dealers are starting to realize that buying a lifestyle dysfunctional IT services company is not gonna help them build the IT services company they need to build. Buying a lifestyle 10-year-old IT services company that's doing $2 million in revenue, those individuals are probably not going to get you a 30 or 40 or $50 million IT services company. But ladies and gentlemen, maybe it's about time you go out in the community and you start talking to IT executives in your marketplace. Don't go out and talk to them to sell them IT services that you're dysfunctional at delivering. Go out there and talk to them about how they're successfully delivering IT services to their organizations. You never know. You might find a new partner. Ladies and gentlemen, getting into IT service is not going to be cheap. There is no secret weapon. When I've listened to these master service providers over the last decade and had experience with a couple of them, at the end of the day, I'm going to say it again. You can't outsource upscale service. If you want to deliver commodity IT services, then you could probably work with a master service provider, but you're never going to get past a commodity deliverable. Because in order for these master service providers to be successful, it almost has to be a commodity. Just think about the business model. If you're out there charging customers, you know, $300 a seat, and that customer is calling a help desk where the average seat cost for those customers is 100 probably not a good place for your $300 customer to be. I've already talked about that, the Lamborghini behind the Ford Pinto. The other thing I'd question with some of these master service providers, and I talked about them a little bit in more detail in another video, but are they even profitable? Because if the master service providers aren't profitable, that means they're probably not disciplined. And what you need to have in IT services is discipline above and beyond everything. But if you're a master service provider like our friends over, think about our friends over at Collaborance that's owned by Great America. Is Great America paying the bills for Collaborance? Just ask them the question. Think about our friends at All Covered, the IT services company here in the United States that Conica owns. Is Conica Monolta's print business paying for All Covered? Paying for all the people that work at All Covered? Paying for the sales engine at All Covered. Can All Covered stand on its own? Think about our friends over at Continuum, which is now owned by ConnectWise. ConnectWise, the largest PSA tool in the marketplace. What, 15, 20,000 IT services companies use their PSA tool? How many companies are on their master service provider platform? What's the average revenue of those IT service providers on that master service provider platform? What's the average revenue of a Conica Minolta's all-covered customer? What's the average revenue of a Collaborance customer? Folks, they don't ever share these things. What's the reason? If you're going to partner with a master service provider, you better know everything there is to know about that master service provider. Why wouldn't you want to know that? If you hired someone to come into your organization and help you build an IT services company, wouldn't you hold them accountable to a P&L? Wouldn't they have to describe the business model? Wouldn't they have to have a performa? Wouldn't you know all these things? I would hope you would. This is the problem with master service providers. It's a crutch. I think dealers believe they can sign up with these folks and it's just going to be a miracle and they're going to go deliver IT services. I think a lot of my dealer friends think if they go out and buy an IT services company, then now they're an IT services company. Folks, you're not an IT services company until you're delivering IT services profitably, until you're selling excess, success, excuse me, assessments, until you have the ability to do penetration testing, until you truly understand cybersecurity and its threats, until you can truly educate customers on cybersecurity threats. Folks, we can't dabble in IT services and make any money. No dealer out there wants to build a lifestyle IT services company. You need to start questioning all the people that are trying to help you into IT services. Just start questioning them. Start asking them these questions. Ask them who the customers they have right now, what the average revenue is of those customers. Ask them what the average seat cost to, the, to those customers and users is. Make sure you know what you're getting into. 
But I'm convinced if you went out in the marketplace and you really started talking to these CIOs of these huge organizations that are in your marketplace, folks that are running IT service organizations, it might only be one organization, but they have a skill set. A CIO of a hospital understands technology. It would be a great resource for you. These people could help you maybe even filter out and hire people. You're not going to do it for nothing. And like I said, you might find a future partner. You might be sitting there with a CIO of a regional hospital, a regional bank that thinks, hey, I got a skill set. If I partnered with this organization, if I had an equity stake in this organization, I could help them build a massive IT services company. Let's start thinking about it a little bit better. I think the way to do it is to build it. But before you build it, you got to bring in the right people to help you do it right. Some things to think about over the weekend, my friends, but we all know this. Status quo is the killer of all that will be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo, and I'll see you all on Monday.